Hey everybody, thanks for being here again. Next Chapter Real Estate. Today I have a really fun guest. Not my typical YouTube video, but I am doing more and more of these interviews and I think you'll love this guest. Her name is Leanne Pepper. We connected because I heard her podcast talking about her dad's passing and before that she had to deal with the assisted living and emptying his house and just so much of what I do on a regular basis and I was super intrigued and I became addicted to her podcast. So I'm really excited for you to meet her. So here we have Leanne Pepper. Thanks for being here. Hi Annie. Good to see you again. My new best friend. Oh, I love it. I love these connections I make, make online and different Facebook groups and the podcasts that I'm just getting more obsessed with and your podcast class reunion, you're going to tell us more about it. But honestly, I keep messaging you. I'm like addicted. I think I've listened to almost all of them. So I'm going to be that person waiting for it to drop each week. Now. I'm glad <laughs> so you enjoy me. my trauma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so fascinating. And, and, you know, specializing in what I do with my real estate, mm -hmm. I see so many, you know, adult children having, you know, kind of trauma from mm -hmm. growing up and now they're coming together to sell mom and dad's house. But they really kind of revert back to these patterns of being in high school, something that's been simmering with them their whole life. And yeah. I really love that your podcast kind of highlights a lot. Of, I wouldn't say highlight that it's, it's not depressing at all, but it's just like how people grow through some of those things. But um, anyway, I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> it's a perfect segue to why I started class reunion, because as you mentioned, I had my, my mother passed first then my dad. And like all of us, we have interesting family dynamics. And so with my father being gone and my son living with his girlfriend, there's this reflection of like, wow, we just went through the last parent passing. And what, what does that make us? Like, how are we going to be redefined as a family? And all four of us reacted to my dad's passing differently. Same with my mom, because we have four different relationships. And there was something I heard along the lines of, you are raised by a different parent than your other sibling because of the age. So if you're the first, you know, it was their first time being parents, right? So they're, they're, they're going to build a different relationship with you, whether it's overbearing or who knows, but that's an entirely different yeah. age that they were parents and their knowledge of being a parent. So you all have a different relationship. And I think once I recognized that and I saw it kind of unfolding with my dad, it made me want to reflect on my past that much more. And thus the class reunion, I thought I should really go back because of the wounds you say that a lot of people have when they bring him to the house yeah, and talk to that little girl again and just reminisce on the good, the bad, what I did or didn't know. Um, and, and it's really been a great uh, evolution of myself emotionally and physically. You'll see me from the first episode all bloated and, and uncomfortable. And I remember not really feeling my best to now where I've made a lot of peace in sharing my story and I have a ways to go with looking good, but I'm, I'm better off than I was a few months ago. And so I was like, wow, who else needs to kind of go through this journey of marrying the past with the, with the present, right. And, and just making sure we're whole in our connections. And, um, and it's been, it's been really fun interviewing all of my classmates is what I've done. I've gone back and I started with my first kiss my homecoming date, my first best friend. Um, and reconnecting in those relationships has been really, really uh, enlightening and, and fun. It's fascinating because, you know, this is why I've said to you too, that I have like kind of seen my experience through your experiences. Because at first I yeah. thought, oh, the first kiss, you know, would be kind of funny or whatever. But there was so much more in that conversation. But it was like both of you, shared things about where you were then and where you are now that was yeah. relatable. And I thought, gosh, this is like probably so much of, you know, the high school then to now, how yeah. people go through different things. And then, and then, oh my gosh, I loved your episode talking about the different TV shows, you know, from back then. And that, and that was interesting because not every podcast episode is you interviewing someone from your past. Now you, you know, interviewed other people, 
yeah. which is fascinating. But then you've also done the, some of the solo ones and like that TV show was breakdown was fascinating and I loved it. And it was, you're really good at, you know, breaking down your thoughts and, um, and I always walk away learning something. It's not, you know, I happen to just love people's stories in general, but it's, I actually really learned something kind of about myself too. Um, so you're really good at it. <laughs> oh, thank you. But, you know, we tend to forget because we we're just so busy moving forward. Right. And nothing's wrong with that, but we tend to forget, like, how was I raised and what, what were my thoughts and takeaways? And I've mentioned to you this many times before, and I say it a lot on my podcast, we were so void of any toolkit growing up and, and understanding the dynamics of friendships or families or teachers. You talked about impact of teachers because my best friend Nancy talked about something that a teacher had said that stays with you. We're, we've just kind of forgotten that so much of that formulated who we were and are to this day. And to kind of unpack that again, this later in life is it can either be a lot of fun, right? Because we talked about TV shows, which was fun, uh, or very insightful where you do the self-reflection of, gosh, I had no idea I was carrying that in my life for so long. And to, and to just recognize that we've got to let that go. And the trepidation that everybody has about going to a class reunion is real. Mm -hmm. And I think so much of it is you go back to that person again. Oh yeah. gosh, I don't, you know, if I see Gregory, I don't want him to see me now I've gained weight or whatever the case is, yeah. or they're successful. We're all going on an even playing field, which is we're here now. Thank you. Which yeah. is healthy. We've lost a lot of classmates yeah. and so much of, of all of that, that we reacted to at high school was based on Family dynamics. The class bully is not a class bully for for no reason at all, right? There's there's things that none of us really probably knew about them, and they're not coming as that same person. You right. know, they're coming totally different, and we just need to celebrate where we're going to go on this next journey for the you know remaining half and make it fun. Um, I, I've learned that we all came from some storyline behind closed doors. And um, how we acted out about that is really universal. So as much as you think there's different groups of people, the popular, you know, the person that drank and smoked too much or whatever, or um, the jock, the reality is we were all the same. We, we all really felt high school was difficult and uh, growing up is difficult. And so we, we all had the same trauma behind closed doors. And that's what I, I like to share. It's like, it's a level level playing field, guys. Go back to your reunion as adults and just relive the good days and and connect from here on out because the pool of people we're going to have in our lives is going to shrink, right? Oh my God, exactly. And and it is interesting when you talk about your, your siblings having different relationships with each of your parents, yes. but then also now the parents aren't there. Who's the glue that's keeping the family together? Because usually it's the mom or the dad that you yeah. know, connects you all. And I find that a lot with my clients, you know, there have been a couple of times with siblings that I really think, oh my gosh, I don't think they're ever really going to talk to each other because of, you know, a little bit of past traumas, but then they live in different parts of the country and they're just not that motivated to keep that relationship alive. And I always kind of share with them, like, have that be part of your legacy for your parents, you know, your parents' legacy that they had you all as children. Like you might not be best friends still, and you might have a lot of hurts, but stay in contact, stay yeah. in contact, at least, at least try that. Because it, it's so sad to me, the disintegration of these families that now they have no reason to stay connected. And it does take usually one sibling to kind of be the bigger person to put the differences aside and say, you know what, we are in totally different places in our lives and have different views. But hey, you're still my brother or sister. You know, I just wanted to reach out and say, how's it going? And I don't know how it's going for your family. How is it? Are you guys still in contact? And yes. And Annie, that's a great point. It is just like simple. How is it going? It doesn't have to be. Remember that time that you did this and, you know, da, da, da. <laughs> we have a, a text uh, chain called Sibs. Um, oh, and and 
the leadership is where I think it shouldn't matter anymore. Definitely. I'm the youngest. Um, but it doesn't mean my sister's running the text message. We all oh, thumbs up there. there you <laughs> we all, um, take turns of just throwing little things out there, even if it's a meme. I mean, that's the easiest way to just yeah. kind of start the conversation with something funny like that. I did national happy national siblings day. And of course, none of them knew it even existed. And so it was just funny going back and forth like that. It just lets the guard down of, yeah. it doesn't have to be a heavy topic. It could be just something super funny or taking a picture that was somebody that um, looked just like my dad that was sent to me. I mean, it was spooky. I, I spooky. And so I sent it to them, right? Yeah. Like I'm, I said, I'm looking for his death certificate right now, just trying to be funny that, you know, this guy could still be out there. And I think just anything that's off putting that just is, is meant to be a funny little joke is a great way to start it. You know, just, it doesn't have to be anything relating to the past, just funny things where you are now, and we all have connected and I'm sure my parents are shocked to no end that we've maintained it and we've actually become closer. I hate to say that, um, but we, we actually have become closer because we're not all living through our relationships with our parents separately and being judged by it. Some of us were closer with one or the other. And I think that's really common. And I think when they're both gone and you don't even have that, that tug of war, then you just learn to relax and fall back on your funny camping trips or little things like that. And it's funny, the stories that we've shared, it's, it's 50, 50. I will not know anything that they're talking about and vice versa. I'll share a story being the youngest that they find hysterical because they don't remember that either. So oh, I love it. It's just, it's, it's been very healing and wonderful and I'm, I'm thrilled we're doing it. Yeah. You know, I love to hear that you guys are, you know, staying in touch. I don't even know your siblings, but just from my perspective, I just think you got it. It's so helpful. I just do think and people are having kids and like they're, you know, we're now my sister is a grandparent and another one, just grandparent, grandmother to two and one more on the way. And I mean, we're all just doing great things with our kids that it's not fair for those cousins to not be. Right. Close. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so it. It's like the, the next generations and whatnot. Um, yeah. Well, that's what I think is so great about your podcast. You know, I was sharing with you that I talked to my brother yesterday and yeah. I was telling him, oh my gosh, you've got to listen to it. Um, and at first he was like, well, I don't understand what is the topic. Like right. he's talking to me. I didn't go to her school. Why would I care? Yeah, why do I really care about that? And I said, oh, because it's so relatable and it's funny to like hear what someone else was going through. But it also made me think about like, oh my gosh, I remember a teacher I had that was so similar to what your guest was just talking about. And so in a way, I think it's helped even my brother and I have more to talk about. I and mean, we're pretty close and we do still have my parents, but it is just the two of us. And so I think we'll hopefully always stay close regardless of my parents, because we don't, not, we all don't live in one town. So, um, but I, I thought I'm always going to share your podcast moving forward with all my clients, you know, the siblings like, Hey, just go listen, because it might stir it up conversation up for their siblings, you know? It's, yeah. Think like, about concerts and musical influence. Yeah, we yeah. think we talked about that when we were talking, I've learned so much about my genre of music because I, I listened to the seventies. The I listened to Carol King and the who, and a lot of bands that weren't my typical era. And, you know, so we relate my siblings and I relate to those conversations. I remember the who concert that my brother went to remember that stampede um, there was a who concert and it was the first of its kind where they went past the chain fence and people were trampled and died. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Like that main floor kind of effect. Yeah. 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 And so my brother was scheduled to go Pontiac Silverdome for those of you in Detroit. And he was scheduled to go to the next concert. They didn't cancel it. And I was like crying. I didn't want him to go. I thought he was going to die. Meanwhile, I'll talk about the era of our parents growing up back then. They let him go. They're like, oh, go have, 
<laughs> I was the only one worried about it. But Jay Giles band, he got a, a rose that was thrown on the stage oh. on the stage and a and a pick. But like you have so many subject matters, your cereals that you liked growing up, your yeah. music, your cartoons, the the TV show. So Annie's talking about like all in the family and mod and um and good times. You know, those were they couldn't be on TV today. And and yet everybody watched them, right? Yeah. It was what we all grew up with. So there's so much to look back that's also very fun to start the conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's exactly it. And I really do think, like you just said, it's keeping the cousins together. It's not just yeah. the siblings, it's the cousins and just, you know, continue on the legacy, but you're giving people a a way to do it in a fun way to listen. But if siblings will ever listen together, it's an easier way for them to connect together. Like, oh my God, did you hear that episode? <laughs> That's a great idea. I never even thought about how it's going to benefit your audience for sure. Oh yeah, no, I definitely. So because like I said, there's so much emotion when, well, you know, selling a parent's house, especially if it's a house that they grew up in. A lot of people hear this, their parents have lived in the same house for 60 years. And um so the memories are really, I mean, palpable. Like it's like they walk back into time in these houses and the same yeah. figurines all over. And yeah. so there, it really stirs up some good, but also a lot of bad memories if there were, you know, some issues. And uh, it's, I do feel like m most of my clients don't still live locally or not all of them. Yeah. So they're walking back into a time machine and there can be just, a lot of frustration, how things are handled in general with the house and emptying it, you know, so there's just so much. So to me, bringing class reunion as a resource, like, hey, when this is all done, revisit your past and and, and stir up some good memories because you guys, yeah. I know you had some fun, you know, fun memories back in high school. And yeah, maybe there are some bad ones, but we're focused too much on the bad ones right now because you're going at it with difference of opinions about, you know, mm -hmm. aspects of selling the house. So get back to that fun loving side and laugh about the memories because honestly, we all get so busy. We barely even take time to walk back and, and figure out what those memories were, you know, like just talking about the music. Right. You know, people right. listen to a song on the radio and they kind of might think about, but think about how it impacted with your siblings, who was, who was playing their music really loud in their room and you were fighting about it, but now it's funny. <laughs> and and trust me, you're going to uncover stories about each other that you did not know. I mean, there, there's some classics we've already shared. You talked about something, I think it was in your book and you also mentioned it on my podcast because I, I love your, your book as well. Um, Next chapter, real estate. Oh, thanks. You talked about like sharing the punch bowl. So there are emotional things in the house that people think one deserves it over the other. But I encourage like the punch bowl to be sent back at the next holiday with a photo. So if your family enjoyed it for Christmas, let's say, put it in a box and put your picture of family with it. Like the traveling pants. Remember that? Um, oh my gosh, Leanne, that's a brilliant idea. You Well, you started it. I thought that is such a good idea. And that, does, that doesn't require a lot. It's just a photo, but you can see the joy of the family enjoying it. And then it goes to the next holiday. And then they put their, you know, I just think that that's a clever way to... That's Not actually, I think now I'll actually bring it up that they, we should find one item that they should rotate every year because what Leanne's yeah. referring to is the punch bowl. I had clients um, years ago that were arguing over a punch bowl, like who got it and no yeah. one wanted to sell it because everyone thought they deserved it or wanted it because the memory was so strong around it. And so we came up with the idea that, Hey, let's rotate. And I think we even pulled names out because there was three siblings and who got it first. So we'd pull numbers like one, two, three, because they were all so digging their heels in about it. And so, you know, they would have to share it. Every, one person would get for one year and then the next person, but I yeah. love your idea with adding a picture thing. And it could actually, I mean, I'm really going to bring that up as an idea that people should do, even if no one really cares about one item, let's right. just an item and do it because then it's also yeah. a connection. And then it could be a funny little tradition of all your families. And after all these years, you have all these pictures of where it's like the traveling pants. Like you said, where was yeah. the punch bowl? <laughs> yes. Or jewelry. That's always another. Big oh, one yeah. 
And, you know, so what if like on someone's wedding day, then you, you know, have her wear the ring that was mom's keepsake or something or put it on a necklace. Like, I think there's so many ways to just let the siblings borrow things for special occasions it takes away that tug of war, you know? Oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. That you just created a, a even a step above my sharing. <laughs> well, you're like a realtor slash psychologist though, because they're social worker, because you do deal with a lot. So I wish I knew you when I was going through all of that with my dad. It was quite interesting. Yeah, it, it's sad because I feel like there are a lot of realtors out there that, you know, help in these situations that really don't get it. No. You know, I was just talking no. to someone else. It's very rare for me to go and be interviewed for a listing that's an inherited property. Um, I can't remember the last time I didn't get that as a listing. Even I just had one very recently that they had already interviewed three other realtors and, you know, they were kind of digging their heels in about someone that only sold in that neighborhood. And then one sibling said, you know what, I think we should interview Annie because this is all she does. And they all were like blown away by my perspective on it because it was so different. And I was still, my goal is still to get them the most money out of that house sale. I'm not sitting there, you know, just being so nice to everybody, but right. I, I guess it's yeah. <laughs> But there are so many different angles in these situations that most realtors don't acknowledge. And none of the other three had prior to me going in and they were like, holy cow. <laughs> so well, I always get a little possessive that I need to be there if it's an inherited property. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and just this, this, the skill you have on language, which I didn't follow or use because we were in a panic situation of COVID and we wanted our realtor kept saying, you know, cause I mean, it's an older house. Um, you got to get rid of a lot of this stuff. You know, have to stage it and clean it up. Well, the guys unexpectedly having to go to assisted living. So emotionally you're dealing with that change, which wasn't his choice, right? He had horrible Parkinson's. And then I did exactly what you said to do, which is you're not going to need that. You're not going to need that. Don't, don't worry about that. You're not, you don't have space for that. I said that, I mean, we had a scale um, of his room and so that he could visualize what he could and couldn't bring. But I can't tell you how many times I said, you're not going to need that. Don't. And, and you were right in like, even teaching that skill of language of, it's such a huge change for them. How you choose your words to downsize matters. Yeah, they really, really don't want to be told what to do, how to yes. do it, where to spend their money, any of the, how, if yeah. they should drive or not drive by their child. Um, I'm kind of going through with my parents. They're both, um, you know, in their mid eighties and sort of having some memory issues. And, and I literally am like having to remind myself because you love your parent or, you know, whether even you love them or not, your interest is to keep them safe. You want to keep yes. your dad safe because he was Correct. not to care for himself. And you're just like, let's just get this done as fast as possible. But from your dad's perspective, he's like, who the heck are you to tell me where I have to live, what I can bring, what I can't bring, what I, and so it's yes. not to say you weren't doing what you thought was right. Um, but in my book, I do talk about that, like try and bring in a third party, whether it's a professional, like a senior move manager or just a third party, the realtor, but the realtor has to kind of know what they're doing, um, yeah. in terms of the languaging, but, um, or just bringing in, you know, a third party friend. So yeah. it's not that fam family connection because they, it really can get, um, acrimonious and yeah. I've heard yeah. a situation where they want to write the, you know, their children out of the will. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we can have those like... <laughs> conversations too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. well, Leon, I could go on and on and talk to you, but I am just so thrilled to have connected with you and met you. And I just am so excited to share your podcast with everybody and anyone, but especially my clients. So, oh, thank really you. And this shows a doing. crossover of like connections yeah. in general matter as well because who would have thought right of both of our worlds colliding and helping one another like i i'm just i'm thankful to have met you and on a on a level of knowledge but on a personal level and um so i do encourage people to take the time to get to know whoever they run into because you just never know never know i never love know. that yay leanne well all your contact info is below so people can reach out and find you on social media and your podcast link but mm -hmm. i really love what you're doing so thank you and thank you for being here thank you